guys, it's Strack, and we are using a new camera with a new setup. This is one of my Christmas presents. It's my big one from the Draculina, and it's a GoPro. And we are obviously here to review this. This is the Nerf Sharpfire. I've been told it looks like a German Mauser. If we look here on the back real quick, we have its holster rig, which is interesting. Then we have that it is an Elite Blaster. We have on the back here explanations of its many forms. So we have normal pistol, pistol with barrel attachment, pistol with stock, full thing, folded up, and then completely folded for holstering. It's really an interesting concept. We of course have the cross bolt, which I am super duper excited about on the back as well. I am not see me seeing any range claims on here, but I assume it's getting elite style performance. It says, stay on the move and mission ready with this six in one blaster. Calling this a six in one blaster is a little ridiculous because it really is only one blaster, but it's, it's very cool. I don't exactly know where my angle is on this camera, so I'm trying to get everything. What makes this really, really neat is you can see here, priming it back, we get this breach. There's a dart tooth up here. Inside, there is a very interesting kind of plunger system, the sort that we're used to. Back here we have a traditional, it looks like a free floating plunger system, which is really, really cool. I like that the breech is built in. It'll lend itself to modification very, very well. I'm going to start trying to take this off. That's just as simple as it is. It's a snap on barrel. It looks like it's tight enough that it will induce some barrel drag here. Not a whole lot though, it's not bad. And it's a purely cosmetic attachment. So let's go ahead and let's chamber a dart that simple and then we'll prime and fire so ranges are actually quite poor which is a little bit upsetting but the blaster as a concept is interesting I'm going to what is this this is the button I assume that releases this and it does so this connects in like this and then the button releases it very interesting the stock itself not the most comfortable but it's not bad it's it's very interesting this is I'm assuming where our blaster will go in so if we want to we slide in like this and then oh man it's got two connection points so there's one here in the back and then one here in the front so you can't actually chamber this wrong because it will connect in like that and that's actually pretty cool the belt loop attachment is nice highly removable here with a simple Phillips head screwdriver. Looks like we have access to our plunger through the back as well. I'm going to fire again, chamber another elite dart, prime it forward and fire. That shot was better, probably about 30 feet. No wonder they're not claiming ranges because this is more of a jolt than a actual in-strike elite blaster. We'll fire with nothing else. Actually, without anything else on this blaster, it reminds me a lot of a lock and load. I like that a lot. I think that it's very cool. And the ranges are not improving at all, but it's still a very interesting concept, very cool blaster. Looking down the barrel, you can see that no matter how you chamber it, it does wind up there at the front and it'll let you reprime. That's interesting that it doesn't have a lock for that. All in all, I like this blaster a lot. It is only retailing for, it's retailing for much less than we anticipated in the Nerf News video. It is retailing for, I want to say somewhere around 15 or less in the United States, and that's pretty good. It'll cost a little bit more at Toys R Us, obviously. But all in all, a, a very interesting concept. The built-in breech system is very cool. And if you wanted to brass this and then brass it through this front barrel and do some major spring additions, you could get some very nice performance. Don't expose your brass by any means. That's insane and would lead to not only a dangerous blaster, but it would also just not look very, very nice. But I think that it's really cool. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and get the Draculina to show it in its final form where it's holstered just because I think that that'll be interesting as a final segment for this video to see it in holstered form. I think that that'll be cool. This is the most compact version of it, and I feel like a lot of people will lose this barrel attachment, so it's nice that they've included this for you to store it. All in all, these are dart storage posts in the bag. I think that this is a sweet blaster. I think that it's really, really cool, and I think that it does what it's supposed to do well. I am a little disappointed that it's not locking in this position, but that's okay. And that's going to be my review. Let's see it holstered and then we'll 
get some uh, some final looks at it. Maybe she'll fire it for us. So this is my good friend Ian, and he is wearing a belt. As you can see, the Draculina decided not to wear a belt today, so I needed Ian instead. You can see this is what the Sharp Fire looks like as it's holstered. It's super easy to draw because it comes off pretty easily. I don't know if it's so easy that it would fall off, but it also has built-in dart storage, which you can see pretty clearly on the holster. Holds, I want to say, six darts, but it's not that complicated to use. I did not give Ian a preview for it, and firing is a breeze. I'm pretty sure that it shouldn't be too terribly difficult to remove the holster and then reassemble the blaster. Other way, it's upside down. There we go. And then the front barrel comes out. And that's really all there is to it. It's a semi-modular blaster. That dart storage is not necessarily the best because no matter which way you hold it, the darts hang off the end and they will fall out pretty easily. But it's definitely a cool blaster. And at the price, it's certainly worth tinkering with and picking up. I think that it's neat. And like I said, it's just an excellent candidate for mods. And it has a very lock and load-esque shell when it has none of its attachments on it. So even as a standalone single shot pistol, I think that it's cool and it's worth checking out. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you like this new style of footage, I am going to buy a head mount for the GoPro, but I think that it's much higher quality footage. And if you liked it, please let me know because I obviously still have the video goggles and I like filming with both of them. So it's time to weigh in. What do you want on your Nerf channel?